Good evening, friends, and welcome to the Lben Tea House. I'm your host, Lben. Today is the last day of the May Day holiday, and I'm sure everyone found places to have fun these past three days. Especially for those who like collecting, you probably stayed away from the flea markets, but for friends in Shenyang, you could visit Lu Yuan, those in Harbin could wander around Do Tai Fu. And for the Beijing Tianjin Hebei crowd, a stroll through the climbing garden on Shenyang Road would be quite pleasant. So tonight, I'm going to tell you a story about a nighttime exploration of Shenyang Road. What happened? I have a buddy named Xiao Ma. What does he do? He's an editor at a publishing house, usually works with text, and often listens to our program for inspiration. This guy falls under the zodiac sign of rooster, in his 30s, and guess what? This year is his zodiac year of birth, which he didn't pay much attention to. However, ever since the new year, he's been having a tough time career-wise. If it's not a problem with his manuscripts, it's an issue with the authors he manages, really driving him nuts. Often, he'd sit in front of his desk in the dead of night, unable to write a thing, tearing at his hair, nearly pulling it out like GEU, going bald. What should he do? Look for inspiration in our show, right? So he'd listen, and then he heard the episode about one zodiac year of birth and suddenly realized. Ah, that's why I've been so miserable, it's because of the zodiac year conflict. No. He had to figure something out, be choosy about it. So, the guy bought an ancient coin. Now, what's the significance of buying an old coin, you ask? Oh, there's a reason for it. The shape of the ancient coin represents heaven and earth, and with the year it was minted in the center representing man, it's about having the wealth of heaven, earth, and man all aligned. The older the coin, the stronger its yang energy, better warding off evil and attracting wealth. But Xiao Ma's purpose was simple. Things had been too sorrowful lately, never mind attracting wealth, as long as he didn't lose money. So he bought this ancient coin, tied it with a red cord around his body, and that was just last month. After the purchase, he asked me to appraise it. I took a look, the coin was slick and lustrous with a greenish patina, decorated with intricate designs. The writing on the front was unclear, the two characters on the sides looked like lions, and below it said pure round. The back had no inscription, it looked like two little figures. When I weighed it in my hand, it felt quite heavy. The coin was heavy in hand when given a shake. Xiao Ma said, Mr. Yang, with your broad knowledge and vast experience, please enlighten me. I told him, this coin of yours, I know it, it's from the reign of Emperor Yang Zheng. You know what this pure circle signifies? Emperor Yang Zheng only ever loved two women in his lifetime. The first was pure circle, and the second, I don't know her name, let's call her true soul. This coin is a commemorative one issued by Young Jung for Emperor's Pure Circle. Come on now, aren't you just making this up? I've read about True Soul before, but let's just say it's for fun, and let that be that. However, just yesterday, Xiao Ma hurried over to see me and said, Mr. Yang, let me tell you a story. What had happened? A couple of days ago, a friend of Xiao Ma introduced him to an antique collector, thinking it was just for a meal and a chat. However, upon seeing the Empress commemorative coin Xiao Ma had, the collector couldn't keep his hands off it. Without regard for acquaintance, he promptly whipped out his checkbook and wrote a check for 80,000 yuan. He wanted to buy the ancient coin, and Xiao Ma was at a loss, he had never seen so much money, and after all, he bought the coin just for fun, not for collecting or investment. Suddenly faced with 80,000 yuan, he didn't know whether to accept or refuse. Suffice it to say, the collector was quite decent, leaving the check behind without taking the coin, conveying the message for Xiao Ma to think it over and call him if he decided to sell. That left Xiao Ma even more unsure of what to do. So where did this ancient coin come from? As it turns out, Xiao Ma's office once sent him on a business trip to Tianjin. After finishing his business, with night falling and a need to return to Beijing early the next day, he pondered where to spend the evening. Ah. He recalled that the zodiac year was said to be inauspicious, so he thought he'd find a place to buy something and stay in. He had heard that the Shenyang Road Old Goods Market in Tianjin was quite famous, though unsure if it was open at night. Deciding to see for himself, Xiao Ma took a taxi to Shenyang Road. Friends from Beijing and Tianjin who were into tribal and cultural playthings might have heard this saying. First came Shenyang Road, then came Panjiayuan, signifying that the Shenyang Road antique market has a longer history than Panjiayuan. There's truth in that saying. Since the Republic of China era, the area around Tianjin's ticket factory was already brimming with businesses. 
tea houses, alleys, prestigious restaurants, you name it, with notable places selling antiques and paintings. As the city developed, these historical artifacts gradually needed a new home, eventually finding their place in today's Shenyang Road Old Goods Market. However, you may find Shenyang Road not as impressive now, and that's because there was a renovation in 2014 that led many vendors to move to the Drum Tower Tianjin. Xiao Ma was unaware of this, and he also didn't know another thing. That Shenyang Road is usually only open during the day and pretty much deserted at night. After alighting from the taxi, he glanced at the destination and then at Shenyang Road, thinking he might look a bit foolish. It was after 9 p.m. one could understand visiting a nightclub to enjoy a comedy show, but wandering Shenyang Road at this hour seemed crazy. Nevertheless, since he was already there, he decided to take a look around. As they say, fortune favors the foolish. As he walked, he could see that all the small street shops were closed and locked up, but there was a little house on the corner that was still open, the light inside faintly visible, drawing attention. The gilt sign over the door bore three large characters, Yi Hui Xuan, which seemed quite intriguing. Why would they be open so late? Perhaps the front of the house was a shop and the back a living area, so they just closed late. Upon entering, he saw the interior was simply but elegantly furnished, and an old man was polishing something with a soft cloth behind the counter. Xiao Ma knew the protocol, he couldn't just barge in and start looking around without a greeting. Sir, he said respectfully, you haven't closed up yet this late at night? The old man didn't even lift his head, just murmured, late, yes, relying on the child to keep an eye on things. An old man's mind always stays on his offspring. This business used to be mine, now it's passed to my child. That's good, replied Xiao Ma. I'm just looking for something to ward off bad luck during my zodiac year. The old man then pulled out a tray from under the counter filled with copper coins and dumped them onto the table, saying, Take an old coin then, since wealth dies for greed and birds perish for food. Borrow something to find wealth. With that, he tossed the ancient coin he had been polishing onto the tray as well. Xiao Ma was intrigued by the old man's quirks, older folks can sometimes express odd sentiments. He didn't have any particular goal, just wanted to take a look, so he started picking through the coins. In the end, however, he kept coming back to the one the old man had been polishing. It looked pretty good, at least to him, it didn't have the verdigris like the rest. How much for this, sir? Asked Xiao Ma. Ten Yuan, the old man replied. Ten Yuan? If you've got ten yuan, give it. If not, go play elsewhere. No, I mean, I didn't expect it to be so cheap. Here's the ten yuan, Xiao Ma said, and with that, he got himself the ancient coin. But when someone later offered 80,000 yuan for it, he wasn't tempted. Why? He pondered whether the elderly shopkeeper had made an oversight, perhaps mixing it up. If he'd sold it for 10 yuan only for it to be flipped for 80,000 yuan, who knows what kind of uproar it might cause at home. I should go back and ask, he thought. See, Xiao Ma had integrity. Nowadays, how many people get dazzled by money? Silver-tongued and greedy, ready to call anyone with cash dad but leave their real father out in the cold for lack of it, right? The more he thought about it, the more urgent it felt. He immediately bought a ticket and headed straight for Tianjin. He sighed to himself, arriving at night once more to find all the neighboring doors securely locked, with only Yi Hui Xuan warmly open. He walked in and saw the old man was still tidying up. Xiao Ma approached, showing the old man the ancient coin, and said, Old man, there's been a mistake. This 10 yuan item, look at this, and produced the 80,000 yuan check, saying. You might have gotten the two confused, he recounted his recent ordeal, worrying that the old man had made an error that could cause trouble at home, so he had come back specifically to ask. At that moment he saw only the faint and dim light. The elderly man stood up, trembling, tears in his eyes, muttering about the mercy of Buddha, and walked toward the back of the room, paying no mind to Xiao Ma. Xiao Ma stood by the counter, wondering whether to follow or wait, perplexed. Old man? Sir? Shopkeeper? No reply. It seemed fruitless to go after him, the place appeared empty, and the old man had vanished as though he had disappeared into thin air. Taking the ancient coin and the check he had brought with him, Xiao Ma quickly left the shop. Since the seller didn't seem to mind, Xiao Ma decided to take the 80,000 yuan to the shop owner. With the money in hand, he thought he'd go see the old gentleman again, having money now, he might buy something else. On his third visit to Yi Hui Xuan, Xiao Ma came prepared, arriving in Tianjin early. Pushing the door open, he found no old man, 
just a young lad sitting inside. Brother, is that old man here? Xiao Ma asked. The boy replied, what old man? I run this shop alone. Xiao Ma stepped outside, looked up, and sure enough, the sign read Ji Hui Xuan. No, there was an old man here, I've been here several times, he insisted, describing the old man's appearance with his white hair cut short and wearing a black coat. I've come specifically to visit the old man after recounting my previous encounters with him, Xiao Ma explained. The young man then invited him inside the house to talk, served him water and tea, and to Xiao Ma's shock, knelt down before him. What is this all about? Xiao Ma exclaimed, startled. Your Grace, please accept my bow, the young man said. Why are you calling me Your Grace? Get up, please get up. Xiao Ma urged, seeking an explanation. As it turns out, the old man, surnamed Yuan, had a strict lineage lineage of master and pupil in the art of metal craft, and the young man was his disciple. Old Master Yuan had exceptional organizational skills and had formed a construction crew with fellow villagers back in the day. In 1988, an opportunity arose as the Kuaiguang Tower on Wutaishansky and Peak needed repairs due to age-related tilt and risk of collapse. Reports were escalated until the National Cultural Heritage Department approved the renovation. Since the National Heritage Bureau doesn't manage construction, they had to find civilian contractors, and Master Yuan's crew was hired for the job. During the reconstruction, they had to dig out even the foundation stones, and that's when Master Yuan's crew discovered a trove of ancient coins underground. Initially, nobody paid much attention, assuming they were ordinary copper coins, which were abundant and not valuable at that time. However, rumors soon spread that the coins were made of gold, and chaos erupted on the construction site as everyone rushed to find these ancient treasures. Amidst the greed fueled frenzy, part of the tower collapsed, burying seven or eight workers alive. If Master Yuan had chosen to rescue them at the first instance, they might have been saved, but lured by the sight of real gold, he chose to continue looting. The authorities later got involved, and despite Master Yuan's steadfast denial, he had hidden over 30 of them. Xiao Ma recognized the inscription on the coins which read Pure Yuan, and those characters that seemed illegible weren't a musical instrument, they were actually imperial treasure. The coins were minted by Emperor Taizong of the Song, Zhao Guangyi, and were meant as offering money. The four characters on the front were imperial treasury purse, and on the back, what Xiao Ma thought were two small figures, were in fact two Buddha statues. After the death of Emperor Taizu, the succession by the light of a candle allowed Taizong to take the throne. Zhao Guangyi felt some compunction about the legitimacy of his brother's death and his own succession, so he had these special offering coins made and placed them in Wu Taishan to express his inner turmoil. These offering coins were placed in Mount Wudai to express inner discontent. In 1988, these coins were valued at 30,000 Chinese yuan each, totaling a significant sum by today's standards. In 2017, Xiao Ma's sale of 80,000 Chinese yuan for one isn't expensive at all. So, Old Yuan made his fortune with these ancient coins and later bought property in Tianjin. Having money changes things, and since the wealth came through the antique industry, he opened Yi Hui Shuen on Shenyang Road. Why choose that name? Ever since he got the money, his conscience was never at peace. The co-workers who died were his childhood friends and good companions. Old Yuan was haunted by dreams of his friends returning to ask him, Old Yuan, why didn't you save us? Every night he was tormented by these thoughts, and that's why he named the shop Yi Hui Shuen, which signifies the regret that would stay with him for life. Upon hearing this tale, Xiao Ma remarked, I had no idea there was such a story behind this. Where is old Yuan now? He suggested calling the old man out, to console him that, after so much time, he needn't feel sad any longer. The young man replied, Mr. Ma, don't be scared, but my master is right here. Pointing to the eastern wall, there was a memorial plaque bearing the name late master, Yuan Ai Guo, and a small black and white photo above it. Looking closely, Xiao Ma recognized the old shopkeeper in the photo. Shocked, he fell to the ground with a clatter, exclaiming, what is this? As he scrambled to leave. Too frightening, he thought, the old man's nameplate is up, that man I was trading with. Was he a ghost? The young man explained that old Yuan had a hard life in his later years, bedridden with serious illness. His children fought bitterly over the inheritance even before he had passed away, perhaps as some cosmic retribution. It was I, the lesser disciple, who tended to him. I didn't dare touch the inheritance, as he had grandchildren, but in gratitude, they transferred the deed of this small shop to me. I also maintain this place in memory of my teacher. 
The young man continued, I was often told that if we could find someone untouched by greed, then my master could be saved. It seems you have been the one to save my master, Mr. Ma, so on behalf of my master, I thank you. And with that, the story for this evening concludes. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you for coming to Lben Tea House. I'm Lben, and I'll see you next time.